Hello everyone, welcome to day 13 of April Leetcode Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanchit Deja, I am working as a software developer for at Adobe and today I present day 656 of daily Leetcode Challenge. The question that we have in today's spiral matrix. Here in this question we are given a positive integer n and we need to generate a matrix of size n cross m filled with elements with values starting from 1 up till n square. So we have to fill in the value starting from 1 up till n square because in total there will be n square elements uh, and this is the way that using in which we have to fill in these elements in a spiral form. To your surprise we have solved a similar kind of a question but not the exactly same which was spiral matrix 1. So if you carefully look at this particular question then here we were given a matrix size m cross n and we need to print elements in the spiral order. So the problem reduces to identifying how to iterate in spiral order. So in case if you have you guys have already solved this question or seen the video of this question then this question should be a cakewalk for you. However in case not then I will tell you on how to iterate in a matrix in a spiral order in this video itself. So let's get started with the presentation and let's quickly hop on to it where I'll be explaining this algorithm as well as walking you through the test case. Lead code 59, spiral matrix 2, it's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt with respect to solving this question in general or if you want to ask something from me, please feel free to ping on the telegram group of coding decoded or the discord server, both the links are mentioned in the description below. Now let's get started with the question, here the value of n that is given to us is 3 that means we need to create the matrix of size n square, the total number of elements will start from the range of 1 up till 9. What do we do in this question? The first and the foremost thing is to create 4 pointers, the starting row pointer, the ending row pointer, the starting column pointer, the ending column pointer and appropriately set their values. These will be set to 0, this will be set to 2, n minus 1, starting column will be set to 0, ending column will be set to n minus 1 which is again 2. And let's start the traversal. In the first row, we will be moving from the left to di right direction, starting from the starting row. So the row, row parameter remains constant across this traversal, whereas the columns keep on changing. As a result of which, we will be moving and filling in data at starting row, matrix of starting row, and the variable parameter here would be equal to J. And J will lie in the range of ending starting column up till ending column. So we will fill in data over here matrix of starting row and j will be the variable parameter whose range will start from starting column up till ending column. Makes sense to all of you I believe. So this is the first iteration that we are going to do. So let's do that iteration. We will create a variable and let's initialize it to 1. So let's fill 1 here, then increment as we progress along the iteration to 2, then we have 3. Once we are done with this traversal, we have to move in the downwards direction, something over here. And as soon as we are done with this, what we will do, we will update the starting row pointer to the next point location, which would be this one. So starting row now, it now points to here. I'll tell you why I am doing this, but just remember that as soon as we are done with this iteration, don't forget to increment the starting row pointer. Now we are interested in moving towards the downwards direction which is this one. So which parameter will remain constant over here? The, y param the j parameter will remain constant which is ending column. So ending column will remain constant and the variable parameter here would be i. And i would start from the range of starting row up till the ending row. So we will fill in matrix of i comma ending column and i will start from the range of starting row up till ending row. And now you understand the reason why I incremented sr the starting row pointer. It was because so that 3 doesn't get added or consume overwritten by the vertical iteration that we are doing in this direction. As a result of which we previously updated starting pointer. So let's shoot for it. So we have 4 then we have 5. Pretty awesome. We are done with this iteration and remember up, once we are done with this iteration what we should do we should update 
the value of EC. EC will now point to one location before, which is we will reduce the pointer for EC. So EC now points to this particular location because we have iterated over the last column completely. Let's start the iteration in the next direction, which would be this one. So what is the constant parameter over here? The constant parameter over here is ER. That means we will fill in this particular row. So the static parameter is ER and the variable parameter is J. J will start from the range of ending column to starting column. Remember this time we are moving in the reverse direction, not from left to right, but from right to left. So EC to SC and let's fill in data over here. We got six, we got seven. And once we are done with this iteration, remember what we should do. We should update the ER pointer. ER is going to get reduced by one unit. So now ER points to this particular location. Once we are done with this, let's shoot for the final iteration towards the upwards direction and while iterating in this particular direction, which parameter will remain constant? Starting column will remain constant. That means the variable parameter would be I. So we will fill in I matrix of I comma starting column and I will line the range of we are right now at the ending row. We'll, we are going towards the starting row. So E R to S R and ER is pointing to this particular location. SR is also pointing to this particular location. Uh, as a result of which we'll simply fill in eight over here. This process can continue as we have more elements in our matrix, but right now there were only nine elements. So the next iteration is pretty simple. You can do it by yourself and here we'll get nine. So when is the breakage condition? The breakage condition is really simple till the time my SR is less than equal to ER and my starting column is less than equal to my ending column. I'll continue filling in data in my matrix in this order that I have just told. And this is the crux of the problem. So there are four steps involved in it. First, you are moving from left to right direction. You are keeping the starting row constant. The variable parameter here is J as I have told here. The range for J will lie from starting column up till ending column. Once we are done with this iteration, we should increment the value of starting row. It will point to this particular location, this one as we did. And then it's time to move in the downwards direction, which is this here. The variable parameter would be I, it will range start from SR to ER and the fixed parameter would be ending column, which is this one. And once we are done with this, what we should do, we should reduce the ending column pointer. It got reduced to this particular location. And now it's time to move towards the left direction, which is this. Let me just change the color of pen, which is this here. What do you see? Uh, we see that the variable parameter happens to be J. The row index remains constant at in the static ending row, whereas J starts from EC to SC. And once we are done with this, what we should do, we should reduce the ER pointer. We reduce the ER pointer and now the final call where we are moving towards the up direction here, the variable parameter is I again and the starting column or the column index remains constant, which is SC. The I parameter starts from ER and goes up till SR. So this is the crux of the problem. These are the four directions that we are traversing in. I'll be exactly following the same steps as I've just talked here and let's quickly hop onto the coding section to actually see everything in action. Here I've created my answer matrix. If my N happens to be zero, what do I do? I simply return the empty matrix. Otherwise I go ahead and create those four pointers, starting row, ending row, starting column, ending column. And I created a count variable till the time my starting row is less than equal to my ending row. My starting column is less than equal to my ending column. This is the breakage condition. If this breaks, we get out of the loop. What are we going to do? First move towards the right direction. What is the variable parameter here? J is a variable parameter here. The starting row remains the same. And with each iteration, we move from the starting column going up till the ending column and we allocate uh, the count variable uh, to ANS of starting matrix comma J. And with each iteration, we increment the count variable. Once we are done with this, we simply go ahead and increment our starting row pointer. 
now it's time to move in the down downwards direction and this time the variable parameter is i it will start from start row goes up till end row and the constant parameter would be end column once we are done with this we should decrement the end column pointer and now comes the case if my starting row is less than ending column that's another safety check what do we do we move towards the left direction here the ending row remains constant whereas the variable parameter is j which starts from ending column goes up till starting column and once we are done with this we decrement the ending row pointer once we are done with this again we go for a safety check here and followed by moving towards the top direction here the constant parameter is starting column that means j value is fixed i value is variable and once we are done with this we simply increment our starting column by one unit really simple guys exactly same steps as i have just talked in the presentation so let's quickly submit this up accepted the time complexity of this approach is order of n square and space complexity is again order of n square this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye your friend your mentor your catalyst in this journey of yours signing off sanchit roteja